Stephen, I'll let the guys talk about the game. Uh, can I start by asking you, um, does the Ibrox disaster story uh, resonate with somebody brought up in a, a Liverpool household? Yeah, for sure. There's certainly a relation from my point of view, obviously my connection to the Hillsborough disaster as well. Um, certainly know um, what this uh, disaster means to people and obviously want to send my full respect to all the families and the survivors and also pay my respects to the people that passed. Um, it's a very poignant day tomorrow, uh, the 50th year as well. In normal situation, we'd have a lot of people around the ground and We'd, we'd obviously put a full service on in this situation and we could pay our respects that way. Uh, obviously, because of the COVID-19, things will look slightly different. Um, but, you know, as a club, we still want to pay our full respect to everyone that was involved um, and to all the names that are no longer with us. So um, it's a very special day tomorrow. Um, myself and the players are all aware of that. Um, I think the club are going to release something later with more details in terms of what will be happening um, at Ibrox tomorrow. But, um, you know, I would also ask, like to ask our fans to try and just stay away. I know that's tough um, in the situation, but <clears throat> we also have to pay respect to the situation we're all in at the moment and um, stay safe at home. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, David Edgar, please. Stephen, the... The, the crowd, of course, usually create a very frenzied atmosphere at the old firm matches. But without them, does it take on a more technical feel, more tactical feel, maybe more akin to a European match? I think the technical side and the tactical side of the game remains the same, whether there's a crowd there or not. Um, I think, obviously, with a, with, with a non-crowd, you can get messages onto the pitch uh, more. Uh, the players can communicate better. Of course, they can. Um, so from your point of view, I'm sure you'll you'll hear more in terms of the technical and tactical side of it. Um, but look, in, in, in a normal situation, we'd love to have our crowd with us tomorrow. The, the advantage of being at Ibrox with a full crowd in this type of game goes without saying. Um, so that advantage is not there. Uh, but having said that, you know, we couldn't ask to go into this game in a better place. You know, certainly from a league point of view, our form's been superb. We've been consistent. We're hungry. We're in a good place. Um, we've got one or two injuries, but we won't use that as an excuse. We've come through St Mirren unscathed, and um, we're really excited for the fixture. Thank you. Greg Vickers, please. Morning, Stephen. Um, oh. Just thinking back to, obviously, do you notice a sort of marked shift um, in terms of how the team approach and view these games compared to you know, your first away back to September 2018, because you, when you came in, there was sort of that intimidation about Celtic because it was so one-sided for years. I think I've been on record before saying that in the first game we played against Brendan Celtic, I think it was only normal. There was a lot of anxiety. Um, there were still players that were probably feeling a little bit of hate from previous fixtures and scorelines, and I think it was only natural that um, you know, we, we approached that game a little bit apprehensive. Um, but in two and a half years, I think you'll agree with me that things have changed. You know, the squads grew. We've improved. Um, we've had experiences and the journey uh, that we've been on. We're in a much better place now. Um, that's not to say that the challenge is not going to be tough and we don't respect the opposition and everything's going to be straightforward. It's not like that. These derby games um, are very challenging. They're very tough. Good players on both sides. Um, but for sure, in terms of the confidence and the belief and, um, you know, every single one of my players really looking forward to this fixture. It does feel different than, than the first one we faced. Charles Patterson, please. Um, Stephen, there have been suggestions and discussions down south about a possible halting of football, a, a circuit breaker, if you like. Um, how do you feel about that possibility if it was discussed and, and potentially acted upon here in Scotland? I think you leave them decisions to the powers that be. Um, my opinion on it is if there's going to be a significant improvement and everything's going to be perfectly well after that two-week circuit break or three-week, if everything's going to be perfectly fine to crack on as normal, then I'd obviously be certainly for it. Um, but I don't think a circuit break, if there's any evidence or data to suggest that there's... 
uh, a guarantee of improvement. And um, I think we've also got to realise what football is doing to people that are getting told to stay at home, um, who are suffering from boredom and all kinds of different challenges that COVID's presenting. Football's giving people a release uh, and excitement, something to watch. And um, there's been a lot of football on down south, up north. And um, I think it's really helping people in terms of the daily routine because everyone's affected by the COVID. Um, so look, in, in terms of all that, I'll follow what the, the decision makers do in this situation. Um, but for me, there's no guarantees that a two week break is going to all of a sudden make things a lot more rosier than they are now. Andy Newport, please. Hey, Stephen. Um... Can I just first of all just confirm that there's no changes to the, the squad that took on uh, St Myrne on Wednesday night and then just ask, given the size of your lead at the top of the table, is there less pressure on your side going into this game than perhaps the, the previous one from games you faced? Yeah, we've, we've got no fresh injuries from St Mirren, so the squad will be um, pretty similar going into this one. Um, we, we, we don't think of the pressure as a pressure. We, 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 think, it, we think it is an opportunity. Um, it's a big game. We're not going to try and play the fixture down, but at the same time, we've also got to just focus on uh, the task in hand, the challenge, the game plan, what we need to do. Um, we obviously are well aware of Celtic's strengths and weaknesses, and we need to make sure we give the players a game plan to go and execute and also defend uh, in the best way we can. We're not really focused on leads at the top it's an opportunity to to take three points and if we do that obviously puts our position um, a lot stronger where we are uh, jordan Campbell, please um on steven um last two seasons um uh, the your fixture you've obviously come, out, come away with a win and then you've sort of had the momentum stop by going into a winter break um obviously it's different this season as things stand um how much an advantage do you think that is for the team who comes out on top, especially yourselves, given the, given the advantage you've got at the moment? I think time will tell, Jordan, to be honest. Um, we've obviously had success in this fixture the previous two seasons. We haven't really gone and built on that. that that's for sure. That's in, in black and white. Um, it is different this year with no winter break, but you know the fixtures don't change. Um, hopefully, we can get a result tomorrow where we can continue our rhythm and... Um, you know, we haven't got a fixture for eight days after this one, so we will give the players uh, one or two days with the families after this. Um, and then depending on what the result is and how it goes, we'll, we'll, we'll approach the next fixture from there. Um, but, you know, people make an awful lot about winter breaks and Dubai and this, that and the other. But um, for me, it's, it's a load of nonsense. Um, the reality is we haven't really... Um, being the best version of ourselves from, from the turn of the new year in both seasons. That's the reality of it. I think using Dubai or a winter break as an excuse is the easy way out for us. Um, so, you know, we're very much focused on each fixture as and when it comes and, and tomorrow they're no bigger than this one. And uh, finally, Liam Ross, please. Um, hi, Stephen. Um, well, just uh, what have you made of, kind of Celtic's recent turnaround in form and does that change your preparations at all for uh, tomorrow's match? I haven't really focused on Celtic's form. I think our fixtures and schedule has been very demanding. Um, I haven't really had time to breathe or blink in, in terms of focusing on any, any other opposition, only the ones that we've, we've faced, really. And, um, you know, since our setback in the Cup, the players have delivered 12 points from 12, scored nine goals, conceded one. So our reaction and response has been fantastic. So we go into this game... Um, confidence in, in a good place. Um, obviously, Celtic have, have, have won the last couple of games. Um, I think it's against Hamilton, Ross County and Dundee. Um, but they're playing Rangers tomorrow. It's a different challenge for them. Um, different challenge for us and it's one we're really looking forward to. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.